Hey guys, Adam Savage here with another one day build. In fact, it's not the one day build I was planning today um, because I've got to solve a problem. I've got to solve a problem here in the shop that's been vexing me before I continue with any more builds. And it's, it's this workbench. Okay, um, I got to fix that workbench because it is a workbench in name only, a wino. Why no? Workbench in name only. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me just show you what I mean here. I'm just gonna clamp in my, my phone um, and just let you see the degree to which this thing is driving me nuts. First of all, uh, its top piece isn't mounted on the table that it's on. So every time I try and move it out of the way, uh, it, the top piece separates, which is a boring problem. Uh, second of all, I do need to move it all the time because I need to get to stock and stuff back here, but I resist moving it because of this. Look at this. Here, look. This whole thing is wobbly, 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 and it's no good. I can't, I can't use a wobbly workbench. So, before I proceed with any other projects, I want to take this thing apart. Actually, I want to shorten it just by a little bit and I want to rigidify it. Once I've done that, then I can move on to the other stuff. So let's reconfigure a workbench. <clears throat> All right, I have uh, taken everything out of this table and you can see, yeah, this is shite. I can make this more rigid. It's just gonna take me a little bit of construction, but it needs to happen. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, so let's see. I guess I'm gonna start really taking it apart and pulling out all the Allen screws here. Let's see, maybe they're not true. Wow, first try. Okay. together. Barely a table. Right? Look at the wheels. There's nothing. Okay, so my first question is, so my first, a couple things. One is the wheels were barely, the wheels have a, uh, a rubberized pressure sleeve so that when you when you tightened up this nut, I believe, this, uh, this came down and pressured in and made a nice tight fit in the tubes that support this table. That's one thing. Um, in order to make that work, I need to dismantle the wheels. So I've got a socket with a driver bit for my uh, 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 hammer drill driver. 
impact driver. That's what it is. Um, secondly, I can see that the long rails holding the tabletop together are uh, failing. And in fact, I may just turn this tabletop here into the top of that and mount the rails right to it. Yeah! Um, but first, what I may do is actually weld this thing together because I don't need it to be configurable. I could weld these pipes to their pipe sleeves um, and get a lot more rigidity. I have one more plan for rigidity, but uh, once I've got stuff welded and I see where it's at, then we'll go from there. I'm appalled. I go on, I'm appalled. Seriously, seriously. Look at this. These are these little tiny, like 1032, maybe 832, with little, little brass cap nuts. Who at the factory decided on that method of attachment? Yeah. Let's get rid of this tabletop entirely. We'll use a wooden top. your problem. I have rarely taken apart something and been so spectacularly unimpressed with its with its execution. Wow. Okay. You are gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I want to get uh, get these pipes over to the welding bench and uh, get to some welding. Hey, welding in today's one day build. Don't you hate it when you've got to weld and you don't have a place for your minigun? I mean, ugh, it's just like a tile puzzle around here. Everyone has the same workshop problems. Oh, or I mean, the old a dentist girl, which I guess we can move all the way over here. Uh, right, I gotta get that. Okay, so um, I have dismantled the entire table. I have ground the, what looks like um, a protective, probably zinc or some type of stainless coating on these pipes. <clears throat> you, you can weld right on top of the zinc coating, but you don't want to. You don't want those heavy metals in your nose. You want to grind them off. So uh, I have all four pipes are ground on both sides. I'm actually going to install the bottom shelf upside down. Yeah, um, I'm going to set the set screws and check my square uh, because that should hold everything in a nice orientation. And then I'm gonna weld it so that it's permanent. And I like the idea of the bottom shelf having a lip to it. That, that, that is actually useful to me. Yeah, I think that's gonna be nice.
Okay, so obviously one of the things I was dealing with was that a lot of this construction stuff, the set screws, were super loose. Uh, so one could make the argument that I just reassemble it like this with a new tabletop and it should be good. But uh, honestly, no. I still think it needs some real rigidifying. And I aim to add that. Let's just check our squaricity here. Let's just see. Not. All right. Uh, I just got this all set up here, and uh, I was getting ready to weld it, and my welder doesn't work. Actually, let me turn it off so I don't have to hear it. Anyway, uh, my welder is malfunctioned, so uh, welding this table is not an option. It's not going to be something that I get to do. Um, I have another uh, plan for triangulation, and we're going to implement that plan now. So, um, yeah, I got all dressed up and had no place to go. <laughs> the welder is probably a simple fix, to be honest. It's probably, uh, look, when you click the, the trigger of a MIG welder like the the SP 150 or whatever, 180 that I've got there, uh, just joins two wires and tells the welder to start the electricity and the gas and the spool. Uh, and it's clearly not getting that instruction, so it's likely a simple fix, but not one that I'm in the mood to do today. So I'm not going to. Um, I can't tell if that's my hearing aids ringing or if it's the world. No, it was my hearing aids. Okay, um, we are gonna move on to plan B. All right, uh, so I've placed my, uh, my wooden bowling alley top on the bench top here. It's still quite wobbly and it will be on the wheels. So I have some other triangulation solutions that I'm gonna implement, but first I'm just gonna clean up the top because that'll give me energy for the next step. Oh yeah, we could do this one as a time lapse. All right, it's already looking a lot better. Uh, I have, uh, Cleaned the top, scraped it, sanded it, put a little finish on it. Uh, while that's setting up, I'm going to do some rigidifying. Oh, and to do that rigidifying, I'm going to use one of my favorite cheap materials, hardware store aluminum. Like, this is the aluminum you can buy at your local big box store. It's sitting there. It's softened anodized. It's some alloy of aluminum that doesn't bend very, well, it bends fine, but it doesn't rebend. Uh, yeah, this is medium grade aluminum. But for my purposes, for this, this should be perfect. I just have to uh, work out some attachment methods and then uh, we're good to go. I think I want to get a little closer on the action. Let's try that. Oh, I think I can turn off my fan. I have around here some sheet metal screws. Ah, there they are. So what I want to do here uh, is, base, is create a couple of X's. Um, I want to create a couple of X's and on both sides. That'll stop that racking. And then I'm going to do another one across the back of this. Um, many workbenches only have a single side, long side access. Um, specifically because they have a lot of triangulation and stuff like that going on to make them rigid. And uh, yeah, it doesn't feel, yeah, there's way more racking this way than the other way. So we'll do this method and we'll see how that goes. And then we'll go from there. Oh, you know what? Boy, that's the one. 
I'm gonna use my little bandsaw for this. Whoa! Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, that worked great. Let's uh, soften this up on the belt sander. Fellows, only one I needed. Yeah. Okay. So. that that's nice and secure Totally awesome. Let's, uh, okay, so right there, yeah, well, that is that, but I can, that's a spread. Great, okay, so. I don't want to hear that. Let's do some other one last thing. Let's get an eighth inch bit in there. Oh. Can I can I explicate how much I hate hardware store labels? Let's see. Rivet this all together. Yeah. Yeah, we'll um 
I will push those apart in order to uh, connect them to the tabletop to add to some rigidity. Oh, this may end up being this hardware store aluminum is it's not very strong it's not super structural it's not it's you know it's it's not great stock necessarily but for the quick and dirty solutions and if you know what you're working with it can be awesome I am currently using it in a okay that's not recommended I am currently using it as a, um, in its tensile strength mode. I am tensioning it against itself. And that actually gives me, that actually gives me, it does fine with that. It has a high amount of, a reasonable amount of lack of ability to stretch. Yeah, so I, you know, if you know what you're working with, <clears throat> it can be great. Okay. set up a little thing here. The lovely, weird, awesome features of uh, Irwin's quick clamps is that you can use them to push stuff apart too. To be honest, it's an amazing feature. I'm going to put this thing under some tension. Do the same over here. Nice. A little bit of elasticity to pulse and the... Oh no, let's get that out of here. That's it. Same thing with this guy. Oh, I love improving my stuff. Look at that, I dumped out exactly the amount of screws that I needed. Uh, right, I'm going to get rid of that, and that, this guy goes back in my, 
fuckhead. Maggie is so not happy to walk yet. thing feels super rigid. Let's get these guys taken care of. These are beautiful non-marking five inch casters, five inches. Five and a half. Okay. Good, that's um, positive. Hold this apart. Same with this one. Oh, you can't see it. There you go. transfer everything. I don't want to vibrate all the things off this dumb tape. So, move everything to my bench. Portable wheels. Sorry, that was copyrighted music. Ooh, need bigger channel locks. I said I needed bigger channel locks, and um, I have a funny story to tell about that. During Mythbuster days, at some point, we had a PA at the hardware store that I had sent there to go buy me like two critical items and put it on the Mythbusters account. And the PA called me from the hardware store and said, uh, you're under the account minimum, ergo, um, to have an account at this store required you to spend a minimum of 40 bucks every time you went or something like that. And we were at 30. I was like, ah, oh, criminy. Oh, you know what? I said, I can't find my large set of channel locks. So just pick me up the biggest set of channel locks and we should be fine. And he did. He picked me up the biggest set of channel locks they had at the hardware store, which I think is the biggest set of channel locks that anyone makes in the world. Look at this thing. This is crazy! I had no idea what I was asking for! That's insanity how big that is! But every now and then, it comes in handy. Yeah, this is how you do it. Yep, not going anywhere. <laughs> Biggest channel locks in history. These literally are like, I feel like I'm a character in a dollhouse. That 
great Andrew Payne movie, Downsizing. Yeah, that's what it feels like. All right. I think we are okay to start reassembling. I'm always terrified I'm not going to remember how something gets put back together. Um, it is a, it is a real, it's a genuine fear for me. Like, that like, that would be awful. Oh, I put that, oh yeah, I see. Backwards. Yeah, so I do, um, in Zen and the Motors, in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Robert Piercing suggests that you place everything on the table in the orientation in which you removed it, which is actually a really good plan, and I've done that a lot. But also, I've learned over the years to trust myself a little bit more, and that I could figure it out, and I have not been proven wrong yet. Okay, so, go there. Great, they are all. Oh, that's the wrong one. Go. Okay, we've done a lot of rigidifying. We've done a lot of pre-tensioning. Time to pull this guy off the off the apple boxes. Let's see, just how more solid it is. Oh, it feels great. Goodness gracious. Holy cow, holy crap. What a delight. And as far as great. This is awesome. Um I am provisionally very pleased. I hope I can get all this tape out of this. Really harsh in my mellow. Okay, now. Now I want to put in a shelf. I'm getting ambitious. I don't think, I don't think I need cross braces on both sides. I'm gonna go out on a limb and, and make that call. What I do need are cross braces.
get a level, double check everything. Okay, those are level, but are they level with each other? Yes, that's the question. Please. Yeah, it's all pretty consistent. I mean, incredible. Incredible. This is why you use black paper tape when you cover a table with paper. That's why you use paper tape, not gaffer tape. Because it sucks. Um, okay, so we're honing in on the finish line here. I just have to uh, support this table. And I've got this wonderful piece of kind of crap. It's ugly. You know, let me have a trim. All right, <clears throat> I have reassembled and rigidified and I am really happy. This bench, which was a real bear in the shop, every time I had to touch it, it made me sad because it was all like, whoop, 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 we don't know what we do. We can't provide support. So I'm gonna do one more thing before we wrap this quick old one day build and that is gonna cover this puppy with some brown paper. This is this is uh, the dregs of my brown paper roll, and I'll have to order some more. There we go, but we'll do it for now. And my personal favorite material in the shop. You can't, you know, you can it. Black paper tape. It's the best of all masking tapes. Yep. All right, so now I'm gonna bring my puppy into some stretch. This is the best feeling, covering a workbench with brown paper. This was how uh, every new project started at Industrial Light Magic. We'd be told, that's your work table. You're gonna go work next to that dude. Go cover it in brown paper and get started. And it was just like, it's such a civilized way. Staking out the new, and exciting things are going to happen here on this work surface that I have taken care to make beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's I haven't done it in a while, and it's because I abused the top of these bowling alley tops. Uh, but oh, it's time to get back to it because yeah, look at that. That's a nice shot. Oh, folder roll. There we go. Just 
to quick wrap around the perimeter. Glorious. that dudes and dudettes it's never unreasonable to spend an extra hour or two and this was 90 minutes just making one of those things that's a small annoyance and removing the annoyance factor if you look around your workshop right now you look around your home office you will I'm sure your eyes will alight on something that's been bugging you, that's an easy fix if you just got around to gathering the five things you needed to make that fix. So my advice is to make the fix. It feels so much better when you do. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. See you guys next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching that entire video. You are amazing. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that you can now show your tested solidarity with some tested merch like this beautiful, beautiful drawing of the rickshaw that I built for Spot. This drawing was made in conjunction with the artists at Teespring and you can buy the t-shirt in the link down below. Um, yeah. I didn't know that my life was incomplete without a funereal, charnel, black Victorian rickshaw to be dragged by my robot dog, and yet that was the case. And now you can have your own piece of this lovely, lovely carriage uh, and wear it on your body. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.